Hey guys, in this video I'll teach you how to draw this watermelon in vector art using Inkscape. This is an intermediate level tutorial and so you'll want to know the basics. We're going to go through fairly quickly. This artwork has been created by UK Art Design. I've partnered with them uh, to create the artwork and the video and I'll be doing the voiceover. So we're going to try to test this out and see how it works. If you like this video, we'll make more in the future. You can download the source file at Wikimedia Commons. I'll include the link in the description if you want to check it out. Let's hop over to the screencast though. First we're going to select the circle tool and we'll draw a circle. And then since we don't want it to be completely circular, we'll go path, object to path because we want to change the shape slightly to make it more realistic looking. So we'll make it a little bit off, uh, not quite so circular. We'll change the color to green and then we'll go ahead and grab this Bezier curve tool. And we'll use this to just sort of left click and create these nodes. We're going to draw sort of the lines, the black lines that you see, or the dark green lines that you see in Watermelon. Uh, here's like a reference of what it'll look like. So we'll speed up the video here and just show drawing all of these. It's really just a path, an outline drawn path. When they're all drawn, we'll hold down the Shift key and left click to select each of them and go to Path Union. This creates a unified path. We can then right click and go to Duplicate. And so selecting both the circle and the new path, go to Path Intersection. And that'll clip off the tops and bottoms so that our lines are just within the circle. We go to stroke and turn off the stroke, but then we turn on the fill and then we'll change the color to this darker green so that it shows up. We're going to repeat these steps again with the Bezier curve tool. So this time we're creating the outline, a little bit lighter green color around these darker green lines. If you feel like this is going too fast, you can change the video playback speed of this video on YouTube in the bottom right hand corner. Um, but I really want to get through this material. I don't really want to drag this out too long. We're holding down shift to select all of these again. We go to path union. These are the same steps we did to create the original ones. We duplicate it and then selecting both the circle and the new path, go to path intersection. Then we turn off the stroke. We turn on the fill. And again, it's over top now. So we adjust the color to be able to see this. And this time we have to lower it down one level so that we can see through what we did before with that darker line. We'll copy the color and we'll add a gradient here. So we select the gradient tool from the toolbar and we can move that gradient. If we click the center, we're adjusting the center color and the position of it. By clicking the arm, we're adjusting the color that it fades to and also the length that the gradient goes out. Right now it's fading to white or transparency. We can adjust this color to fade to a darker green and then we can move the gradient around to where it looks good. It kind of gives it that lighting effect like it's a little bit more light in the middle and then darker around the edges. From here we duplicate the circle and we'll move the circle down just a little bit and go to path difference. This will just create a little sliver and this sliver we can adjust the opacity to give it sort of a, a glassy outlined look around the edge do the same thing again. So we duplicate, move it to the point we want, and then when both are selected, we, we are creating the difference to create sort of a half moon shape. This time we'll add a black color and a gradient to create more of a shadow in the bottom right hand side. And we'll repeat this process one more time to create another sort of half moon shape. So we'll bring the circle up about this high and then selecting the original circle and the intersection of there creates this moon shape. And we'll adjust that again with a black color with a gradient, turn the opacity down. And we'll add a gradient in here. Now we'll add a circle and we're going to turn it white. We're going to go to path, object to path to make sure that we can change the shape of this if we want to. And then we'll add it up here to the very top left of the watermelon. And then clicking the edit pass by node is where, how we can get into these nodes and adjust the shape beyond just an ellipse. So we can come in here and fine tune it. We can use these handles to adjust the angle that the lines come out of each node. It looks, it's a very hard white right now, but we can adjust the opacity and we can also apply a gradient, which is what we're going to do. So we grab the gradient tool and this time we can just draw a linear gradient right on here and we can move it around, get it to where we want, turn down the opacity and now we have a nice glassy looking well lit uh, watermelon. If we left click and drag and select everything, 
we can go to object group and group everything together. Then when we move the watermelon, it all moves together. Now for the next part, we're going to draw the half sliced watermelon. So we'll get a size reference. We'll draw a circle and then this rectangle. We'll lay it over top, select both, go to path difference, and that cuts this in half. I'm not gonna be doing the, the pausing and highlighting for the second portion because it's all the same tools. But again, you can pause the video or you can watch slower. Uh, we go path difference with these two. So we create a sort of a slice in there. We change the color to red. Duplicate again by right clicking and going to duplicate. You can also use a shortcut control D on your keyboard to do the duplication and then path difference. And we do this a couple times here to create sort of this um, layered effect where we have a different color layer of half circle going up. We'll add a gradient in here from a darker red to a lighter red and keep bringing this up just to give it some more depth, some more perspective and some different lighting. So we have like this darker red towards the rind and then we have more of the light red as it gets to the center. And for this part, we're going to we're going to draw those darker lines that we did on the whole watermelon. So we just draw these, we create the path, and then we need to go path intersection with the intersection of the green half circle. We can use the eyedrop color to pick the same color that we used last time, so we get it exactly the same. And then we'll repeat the same process for that, that sort of outline. This time we're looking at a cross section, but it's the same colors and the same tools we're using. So we'll grab this again, and then we can change the color with the eyedropper tool. And now we have this exact same colors of greens that we were using in our original one. We'll create some circles here with some white with opacity to kind of create a nice um, lighting effect against this red. Apply a little bit of a gradient to that as well. And this is going to be the seed. So we draw a circle and then, or an ellipse, we'll go to path, object to path so that we can change this to be more of a seed shape. So we'll adjust that slightly. And then we can draw a little highlight here. So we'll draw this sort of a half moon shape. This is just drawn with the Bezier curve tool. We add white, we add a little bit of a gradient, and then we can duplicate these seeds and place them around the watermelon. So again, we can use control D to duplicate. We can add all these together and create a group, and then we can rotate them around. We can flip and rotate. Resize the inner ones to be a little bit smaller than the outer ones. We think we have that good. We can select the whole thing, go to object group, and now we have a nice sliced watermelon that we can move around as one group. We'll place it right up here next to the watermelon. And from here, we just need to create a little bit more depth, a little bit more lighting. So we'll use the Bezier curve tool to create a black object here that will reduce the opacity and have it be some shading. And then we'll place it behind the watermelon to give it sort of that layered effect. And we'll create a black circle with a radial gradient. And we'll place two of these, one each under the watermelon. And this is a great little trick for just creating a nice shadow effect, like there's a light shining from the top. And then you have that shadow underneath. Really simple to do and really adds a lot of uh, depth to the image. We'll create a black square, and then we'll turn this into a radiant as well, but we'll have it kind of gradient to a darker gray with a lighter gray in the middle, just to give it sort of a, a nice backdrop, to give it some contrast against the background. Here we'll select both watermelons, and we'll flip this down. This is going to be the reflection. So as we flip it, we need to adjust the bottom one a little bit up so that we can have a, an accurate looking reflection. We'll adjust the shadows a little bit and the lighting a little bit to make it look natural. Then we'll select all of it, we'll group it, we can go to object clip, and we can clip this so that it's not, not going off the bottom of the uh, background there. And then we can lower down the opacity to make it look more natural. Adjust the shadows a little bit under the watermelon, and there you have it. That's the final image. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I feel like I talked very, very fast. Let me know your feedback, what you think about this video, if we should do more like this. As always, thanks for watching, and I look forward to catching you in the next video.